and use your ministry for their purposes. So there is a blessing in being hidden. Believe me. Oh, you are special to me. You are special to me. You are very special to me. I want you to know how special you are. Come unto me. I'm going to give you some out of body experiences. I'm going to bring you up into my throne room. I'm going to have communion with you. I want you, says the Lord. I want you. I want you. I want you. I want you. I will bring you up to my throne. I will have communion with you. I will talk to you. I will meet with you. Come, sit on my lap. The only thing between you and me is your free will. Will you come? Will you set time aside and come to me? I will show you the wonders of the universe. I will speak with you. You will have good time, says God. I will put joy in your heart and laughter. I will take the worry lines out of your face. I will put peace in your heart. I will be your father. I will be good to you. I will look over you. I will be jealous over you. I will watch over you. Many times, the throne room of God is empty because no one comes. They stand and they shout, but they don't come. Come unto me, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's a prophecy delivered some time ago when the assessors and prophets met. It's a long one, but that is from the heart of God to his children. It's a love letter that God has given to us, his children, to encourage us to know that what we are doing, he sees it and moves on. Now, if you are doing something and nobody seems to appreciate it, at times you think that you are doing nothing. So God just wanted his children to know that he sees everything, to urge us on to do it. And this is from God. People who believe in prophecy, you will know that that is from God. Amen. At times people don't believe prophecy. But I'm a prophet, so I know what it is. God speaks to us face to face. He speaks to us the way I speak to somebody. It's based on relationship. The way you are close to God, God can choose to walk to your house. Call you by name. At times it is trembling, but God can call you by name. And you just be dead. But that is God for you. He decides what to do. His ways are not. We just need to be obedient. And God will do great things. He's just looking for someone who will come and sit on his lap. You see, God is romantic. People think that God is just a static. No, 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 no. God is romantic. God is able to move and touch you and do all kinds of things. So that's the nature of God. So when he comes and says, I love you, it's not just anything about husband and wife. But God made them. So the spirit is in them. So if their husband and wife are doing it, where did they see it? It's God. So that is God. So that is how he wants us to what? Get close to him. But there's only a gap because we don't go to him in prayer. When we go to him, he reveals what is in his heart to us. What is going on in our family, in our nation, God will just tell us. Let's take it serious. Let us not just do it because somebody has called us to come and pray. Let's believe that we are called into that. And let's surrender. Let's allow God to be God. It's not easy. You see, he will give you a burden, but you need to what? That is a relationship. If you love somebody, any time in the night, when he calls you, what will you do? You will pick the call. There are some calls I take deep in the night. That is not everybody call I take deep in the night. It's based on relationship. Yes. It's based on relationship. Some I have to look at it as a no, this way I'm not taking it. Yes, I'm not taking it. But there are some calls that come, even before it finishes, really, ah, I think it's based on relationship. And that's how God deals with us. God is closer to us even than what a friend. We need to just understand that He just wants us to what? Draw closer. Things that are happening in the world, God is not getting us to stand. That is why all these things are happening. Because we have the power. The power is in us. We are made in the image and likeness of what God. And what is in us? One believer, you can turn the world upside down. You don't need what? Bombs. 
the power of intercession can stop things yeah. that is happening. But you see, we don't use it. And we just even pray, don't take our prayer is going somewhere. So we pray and we are afraid of oh, just wasting time. We are not wasting time. Believe that whatever you are praying is heaven, heaven. Amen. Our Father is hearing me. Jesus Christ is sitting at the right hand side of the Father. He's interceding. He's joining us. So don't take it lightly. Don't take it lightly. You are precious. Just make time. Be available. Pray. Even if you don't know how to pray, if you can speak in tongues, go ahead. If you can't speak in tongues, let God help you to pray by the leading of the Spirit. At uh, times pray, eight hours, six hours, five hours, as the Spirit leads me, and I don't even realize it. Because the Spirit takes over. I'm not the one. And when you do those things, the prayer goes into the heavens. You finish just with some joy. With you. Some joy. You ask what is this? You can't explain it. That is the joy. We are close to him. Let us value what we have. Let's make more time. Let's be obedient. Let's put this flesh aside. The flesh profits what? Nothing. The Bible says in John 6, 63, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. The flesh profit nothing. This flesh is going to profit nothing. At times, God will ask you to pray, and the flesh will say, oh, sleep some more, sleep some more. Before you wake up, 8 o'clock, you are running to work. <laughs> but he calls midnight to talk to you. He came to you just like your husband and said, excuse me, those who have husbands and wives. As your husband approaches you in the night for something, that's how God is also coming to you. And so, oh, no. Like what, like what the woman said, I'm not in the mood. I'm not in the mood. Uh, I don't feel it. And when God comes to you, you are saying, I'm not in the mood. I'm not feeling it. So God, when I come at that time, I'm not ready today. So what we do to our husbands, we do the same thing to God. You know, the moment he taps you, there's an assignment. Yes, get up. Get up. Start praying. He will tell you why. Let's be sensitive to the spirit. Let's be sensitive. There are a lot of things going around us. He calls us to pray and we say we are not ready. Why are you not ready? Why are you not ready? You live for him. The air we breathe is all about him. We live to worship him. So that is our assignment. It's not any other thing but the assignment of God. Let's be sensitive. From today, you have an assignment. Amen. Anytime he calls you, arise and just start. And the Lord will reveal deep things to you. Amen. There are some burdens that we have, not because we should have it, but because he has given us an assignment. He reveals certain things for you to see because he wants you to work at it. He gives you a dream. Why? He wants you to work at it. So anytime you have some dream, visions, and trance is for a purpose. The Lord is speaking to you. Wow. Rise up and pray about them. You may not understand it, but you pray about it. God will do something about it. Why did he give you that dream? Why did he show you that vision? It's for a purpose. He needed somebody to work at it. Because he knows that when he gives to you, you work at it. That's why he revealed it to you. That's why he didn't reveal it to Pastor and call it back to you. So you have to do it. Where you feel you don't understand, get closer to somebody who is a bit higher. And say, this one God has given me part of you. Help me understand it. Make it best. God will always prepare people to help you along the way. Yes. God will always do it. When I was growing up, there were people that I met, Bonky, Taylor, Osborne, and Sidney Jacob. God will just bring them my way, just like that. People that don't have to beat in life. Because you see pastors rushing. But God will just open a door and say, I want this person to lay hands on you. Lay hands on you. And through that, I've met several of these ones, big, big, big names. But here I stand, look at me. I've met them, they have laid hands, they have impacted what? They have given this upon me. I met here Osborne before he died. People were rushing to meet him. He left them. He said, I want to just start this guy. He came and held me. Very weak, shaking my head like this. He said, I see God's spirit in you. Just pray for me. I wanted to hear that he So we need to understand that what will make ourselves available, God will raise people to 
for help us. People will be there for you to help you because God what is divine connection. He connect people to help you fulfill your ministry and your calling. Get closer to him. He will give you names. People you don't even know, he will give you their names and say, get the books of this person. Get the tips of this person. And when you start getting all those things, one day he brings them face to face with you. Amen. I had the name of Cindy Jokos for so many years and I was buying her books. I was reading her tips and everything. But when I met her, she said, yes, don't talk. The Lord has already spoken to me. He has keep quiet. He said, I have seen you. God has spoken to me. And that's okay. See the jokers and after they talk. Twist her forehead on me. That's all. We need to understand that we need one another. Let us not just take it that oh No, God uses people Amen. to help people move to the other side. Amen. Most people not be the Lord. They have to lift their hand, put stone in the falling water, Amen. see the victory. Amen. So you are here not just because you are here by accident. God has purpose it. And in heaven, your faces are all just like this before God. All that we are doing, they are taking the pictures. Heaven has already taken because there's an angel who is also represented here. He's also reporting back to the Father. Yes. You see, at times we do this and we think that, oh, it is just about us. Heaven is always recording. Yes. And when the books are open, you will see everything. But it will be too late. But books are always open before God. And everything we do, God takes what? Records. So let's be very careful that whatever we are doing, and when he's taking the record, he also look at our motives, our intent of what we are doing. And I believe we are going somewhere in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll be praying this afternoon, but what I'll be doing, because I'm a prophet, I'll be doing one or two things people will not really understand. I don't live prayer the way other people live it. I live prayer based on the leading of the Holy Spirit. I'm a prophetic intercessor. So what we see, what we hear is what we act on. Amen. And it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Now, we are going to pray a prayer, and that's a prayer of confession. I don't know if we have some of the leaders here, this Zambia Overseas Christian Fellowship. Something has happened some years back. A lot of things have been said. I'm not gossiping, but that's what the Holy Spirit told me. Certain things have what happened. It has created some what bitterness, hatred in some people. And the Lord is saying that we need to what? Work out that if we have to move forward. I don't know. You will bear witness. I don't know what it is. But that's what the Holy Spirit told me. And I just want to deal with it that as it is. At the end, I'll be very responsible. That's why I'm here. So I have to do what He wants me to do. So we want to deal with that issue from the roots, uproot, destroy, then begin to plant the love of God, the unity of God. So that people will not say, oh, these people again. In Ghana, we say, bamboo the work, monkey the chop. <laughs> we need to understand that this is about God. You know what is a monkey? You know what is bamboo? You don't know monkey? Yeah, the big one is the bamboo. <laughs> now, we need to understand that this is about God. And if it is about God, we must see God in it. The center should be God. Personality crash, tribal issues should not come in. This is about God. And we need God, not man. Not where he's coming from. Not who he is to you. But what God has planted that person to do. Then we can move on with the spirit of God. But says the Lord, a lot of things have happened. So some people are even sitting on the wall. People are even watching to see what will happen before they come in. And the Lord is saying that if it happened that way, it's going to bring some cracks. Because there are already what cracks on the wall. People are just saying all kinds of things. We wish this thing would not even work again because we have suffered. And today, look at these people. I believe that we need to be sensitive to the Spirit of God and pick certain information in the spirit realm and work at them. And when we do that, God will take over and we will see the glory of God. So if we have the leaders, some of the leaders, one or two, like Madame here, for her, I know she's one of the leaders, who will come and stand and have a forgiveness for the group 
The past, we want to close the chapter. Amen. What is past is past. What the cacaos are eating, they are eating. There's nothing we can do to bring it back. Let's close that chapter. Let's open a new chapter full of love, full of understanding, full of the spirit of Jehovah God that we can understand that God is up to something that His glory will be revealed. Let us settle it. So please, Father, without wasting time. And when we finish this, no one should open any old chapter again. That chapter should be closed and closed forever. We are going to open a new chapter after they have confessed and prayed. We want to what? Open a new chapter where the Holy Spirit will take over. Please. You are right. Yeah. I just want to agree with what the Lord is saying. Sure, the Lord is God. When can we, where can we run out from his presence? God sees our going in, he sees our going out. For sure, God has seen what we've been going through. We may pretend and behave as though everything is all right. But like the man of God was saying this morning, it is about our positioning, our righteousness before God, for us to stand. Otherwise, everything else can be just a noise before the Lord. We have to go back to the Lord and confess. You know, God put it upon our fathers I think it's now nearly 10 years or more, you know, when ZOC we started, nearly 10 years ago now. People that came in the diaspora, God spoke to them as Zambians. He said, you have to begin Zambia Overseas Christian Fellowship, a place where you can meet to encourage one another, a place where people can be encouraged to bring out their potential and what God has put in them, a place where you can be there for one another, just interlinking, you know, together, to do things together. Amen. And they did that. And of course, along the way, you find that uh, as the work is growing, there are new leaders coming in, you find that maybe the old leaders step back, and uh, maybe for different things here and there. And as the Lord of God has said, we have to pray and confess. You know, because the work of God is not like politics. They are like if a new president comes in, then the old president is completely taken out of the picture. The work of God is supposed to continue. So even as God is raising new leaders, we need the old leaders to be there, to support the work, to bless the work, and even for godly counsel. So whoever has fallen out along the way, because of offense or anything, we are going to stand here. And I want you, you servants of God, to raise your hands before God with us, even as we pray and identify with our sin and with the sin of the ministry and with the sin of our families and with everything else. Remember Nehemiah had to say, me and my father's house. Even though he did not sin personally, yeah. but he took responsibility and he confessed on behalf of his people, and the Lord heard and he healed them. Amen. The Bible says that when God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he remembered Lot. He remembered Abraham's son and saved Lot. So, for the sake of Abraham, God saved Lot. So, as we stand today and confess on behalf of